Hi, welcome to Donsky Tech. So this is a demo of how to plot real-time chart display of your sensor readings using an ESP8266 or an ESP32 microcontroller. I have here my ESP8266 connected with an LDR or a photoresistor sensor. Inside my ESP8266, I have a web server running and I have here my line chart that displays the real-time sensor readings from my LDR sensor. As you can see, if I limit the amount of light in my photoresistor, then the chart displays becomes low. If I let go, then it goes back up. Let's try again. So the value is now at 800. If we, if we put our hand in the photoresistor, you will see that the value goes down and then it goes back again to its original value which is around 800. I have plotted my sensor readings in a real-time chart, line chart, that updates its user interface asynchronously without any delay. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. In this video, I will be exploring how to plot a chart of our sensor readings using an ESP8266 ESP32 microcontroller. As you can see, these values are in the milliseconds range and our page is updating asynchronously without the need to refresh it. We are using a photoresistor or a light-dependent resistor as our sensor so that it is easy to change the reading instantaneously compared to when we use sensors such as temperature or pressure. They both render all right in both the mobile phone and in the laptop workstation browser. Also, as these are web, web socket clients, then they get updated at the same time by the web socket server. How cool is it, right? So this is the, the design of our project. We are creating a web server inside our ESP8266 or ESP32 MCU. At the same time, we have a web socket server created as well on the same port as our web socket server. When the HTML page loads, it opens a web socket connection to our web socket server. This web socket connections allows us to pass messages in real time and in a bi-directional manner. When the ESP8266 or the ESP32 microcontroller unit senses that the LDR values changes, then it pushes a web socket message to all the clients. When all the clients receive these messages, then it, it updates its user interface asynchronously without the need for page refresh. So this is just the wiring schematic diagram of our project. As you can see, we just have an LDR or a photoresistor in a voltage divider circuit and the microcontroller is just reading the values from the analog pin. And that's all as for the design is concerned and the wiring and schematic diagram of our project. In the next section, we will proceed to going through the code of our project. So, let's run through a little bit regarding how the code works. The code, in, the code for this project can be found at my GitHub repository, which you can see at the description of this video. When you open that project in Platform IO IDE, then there are just several files that you can take a look, which is important for our project. One is the main.cpp, which controls everything. But before you do, or before you deploy this program into your microcontroller, change first the SSID and the, and the password of your Wi-Fi so that it will be able to connect into your network. When you take a look at this project, you would notice that I just declared a web server and a web socket server on the same port. 
Then I have here the port assignment for my LDR pin. And I have functions that are needed by the web socket server and the web server. As you can see, this read, read LDR value, what it does is just read our analog pin. And then it compares the value of the analog pin with the previous value. And if it is different, then it sends a WebSocket message to all WebSocket clients that are connected to the WebSocket server. In the setup function of our program, as you can see, we just set the serial baud rate of our monitor. Then we start the file system with the little fs and we connect to our PyPy. Upon connection, we attach several events to our web socket and our web server. One of which is this one, which is the in the async web socket. And then we configure the routes that is needed to serve resources to our clients. So since we're using little fs, then we are serving all the index HTML, index CSS, entire framework mean, and the index just say index.js from our little fs file system and then uh, some configurations and then we start our web server when the web server starts then in the loop function what it does is just it continually read the values of our auto resistor or our light dependent resistor and then it will continually send WebSocket message to all WebSocket clients that are connected. So that's basically how the main.cpp work. The next functions that we need to take a look at is the index.html. The index.html actually just imports the scripts that we need and some of the stylings that we need also, which is the index CSS and the entire framework main.css. But the most important part of this project is this line, which is the canvas HTML5 object. This HTML element is being used by the chart.js in drawing the line chart of our application. If we take a look at the index.js, which is the file that handles the WebSocket connection between our WebSocket client and our WebSocket server, then you will see the following code being displayed. So we just declare variables in here, which is the connection to our WebSocket server. And we have a max data count, which is the number of data points that we display in our line chart. For now, I just set it to 20, but you can increase it depending on your requirements. Then we add a function for the onload of our HTML page. And during the onload, we call two functions, which is the initialize socket and the initialize chart. In the initialize chart, what, what it is doing is that it just creates the chart.js chart and supply the initial configurations or options. So in the initialize socket, this is where we open the web socket connection to our web socket server. And then at the same time, we assign callback function that will be called whenever there is a, an open, a close, or a message coming from our web socket server. The most important of this one is the on message. In the on message, as you can see, whenever we receive a WebSocket message from our WebSocket server, we first check if how many data are we already displaying. If it exceeds the maximum number, then we remove the purge data. Otherwise, we'll just add that data into our list of data in our data set. The get current date time will be plotted as our x-axis and it just displays or we're just getting the current date time. The event that data contains the values that is being sent by our web socket server. The, the add data and the remove data, first data, calls the chart.js API that is needed to add or remove data in our line chart data set. And that's basically how the program works. The, in, the index.css and the entire framework mean.css are just used for styling so that our 
user interface will render better in both the desktop and the mobile browser. And that's basically how our application works. If you have any question, just comment into this video so that I can answer it for you. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!